Hey everybody, Gina DeLuca here. So I'm working with a new palette today. Um, my inspiration is Opal. Uh, the colors that I have mixed up here, I wish I could tell you what they are. I wish I could tell you what they are. I have basically just uh, mixed until I had colors that <laughs> I thought looked good. If you could see all of these. Uh, what I can tell you is there is cadmium yellow light hue in this green, in the orange, and in the yellow. And I have put a little bit of a metallic in each of these. So for the Green, orange, and yellow, I put gold. And for the blue, pink, and purple, I put silver. And this is just gold. I have plain white here. These are a mix of basics and artist loft. Um, a little of this, a little of that. I made sure that I tried to stick to my charts. Uh, I was looking for semi-transparent that are more matte in finish. So here's the light blue and artist loft. That's what this is. Uh, let's see. This I believe was uh, the basics cadmium yellow with a touch of the naphthol crimson. Both semi-transparent, both dry matte. This was the quinacridone magenta and the light blue. So again, both um, semi-transparent and matte. And then this was Artist Loft Green Yellow mixed with a little bit of the cadmium uh, yellow light hue. Now that that's all out of the way, this is going to be a ring pour. We'll see what happens. The paints are mixed two part uh, Floetrol to one part paint. I have left this quite thick. I have not even added water to it yet uh, because it's going to be a ring pour and I want less cells and better coverage on the sides. So I want that to remain thick. This is how I roll. <laughs> I decided what kind of paintings I was doing today. I wrote down the colors that I was going to want and then the colors that I might be able to mix together to get those colors. And then I make a list of those colors that I'm going to need and start digging through boxes trying to find them. As much chaos as go that goes on around me, I tried to stay as organized as possible. It's good to map that stuff out if you uh, have limited space. So I will put my blank canvases all around me so I know exactly how much space I have to work with and what order I need to do them in. I am working on an island in my kitchen and I have it set up for two 10 by 20s, two 10 by 10s, and then once they're all finished, I'll do a 14 by 14. And then they can all just sit here and dry and wait for the bugs to land in them. So that's what's been going on lately. Lost three of my last five paintings to tiny little gnats. Uh, I have my sea hooks in here to level my canvases because I have an issue with my canvas being level. Alrighty, I have a little paper cup here. I like to make a spout so the paper cups work really nicely for that. Let's put some paint in the cup. I have a lot of colors and only three ounces here, so 
I will be just drizzling paint in. Um, let's see. Let's do the purple. So I did white. Now that's purple. Do a little blue. Drizzle some white. And I'm going to be drizzling some gold. This is just Artist Loft Old Gold. Throughout that, uh, let's see. Let's do orange. So I just noticed that I started pouring in right where the seam is. Probably wouldn't have done that had I noticed. Let's do, I'm drizzling now. Again, my inspiration is opal. So I want those colors popping through like they would in an opal, but I want them soft. So I want them mixing with the white and the gold and getting softer. And you know, I might leave the gold on the outside. So that'll be on the outside of the ring because that will look very soft when it blends with the white, which will be laying down his base coat right now. This white is also two parts Floetrol to one part paint and pretty darn thick compared to what I usually work with because again I don't want cells trying to avoid the cells although it's an opal so it might look cool okay let's do it there's no silicone in here Yeah, I definitely should not have done that right on the seam. That's a bummer.
Alrighty, let's tilt it out. Now you want to bring your weight back to center before you change directions. Okay, now what I want to do, I don't want this to be so white in the center. So I want to tilt some of that off, but I want to make sure that I still maintain my negative space there. So you may think, oh, if you were going for a ring pour, this is a fail. This is not a fail. Go in with an intention. And then as soon as your paint hits the canvas, let that go and work with what the paint gave you. So although when I did the rings, it didn't really have very much of a opalescent effect However, if I stretch it, it starts to soften up. I may lose this corner here for composition. You know, and I can't stress enough, at least for me, the importance of tilting slowly so that you do have the most control over your composition as possible. So even though I tilted off this negative space, I have the white here, so it still feels balanced. And I was able to stretch these rings out, and what you can't see is that there's a little bit of shimmer 
to all of it. And some of it in silver, some of it in gold. Uh, gold and All in all, I think that came out pretty nifty. Let me wash up and I'll bring you in for a close up. Okay, so here it is. Really difficult to see the shimmer. You see a bit of it. It'll be more obvious once it's dried. And the sides held up well. All right, there it is. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, I hope you all have a beautiful day. Go make some art.